show. Um, today we're talking about how to get perfect eyebrows. Um, I'm Becky, registered nurse here at External Affairs and health coach, and I'm going to walk you through the process of what we do when we're trying to create the perfect eyebrow. So here at External Affairs we've got a couple of tools that we can use. We use a 3D Vectra camera system, which you can see is up on the screen with my picture before my eyebrows were done, and we also use beautification calipers to actually measure and kind of draw science into creating beauty. So there's a couple of things that we want to look at. We want to look at the placement of the eyebrow, we want to look at the shape of the eyebrow, and we want to look at the color of the eyebrow. So what we can do, first of all, with the Becker camera system, and this is just a really awesome tool for showing people, you know, especially volume loss, in and around the eyebrow, because that has such a huge impact on what our eyebrow looks like, especially as we get older. So not much for you young gals, but for us old dolls, we actually start to lose volume in through here. So when that happens, I'll show you how we measure that. So if we take, first of all, a straight edge and actually place it in that temporal region, that will show us if there's volume loss in through here. When there's volume loss, quite often the tail of the eyebrow kind of drops off. So if we can put volume back in here with a product like Juvederm or Emerville, that will actually create lift, all right? Now, the other problem that can happen is there's volume loss in through the forehead and through here. And I'm going to show you what this system does that will show you how horrible my forehead is. So you can see, even from this 45 degree angle, the volume loss in here. So as I get older and I lose more fat in through here, that's going to create more of a drop because there's no support to pick that brow up. Now, with someone like me, um, I wear bangs, okay? That's my choice just to cover it up. And a good hairstylist will help you, you know, figure out what hairstyle is complementary to your forehead. So if we go with a 90 degree angle, this is one thing that we're using, you know, to assess the shape of the forehead, which complements the brow. So we'll use our beautification calipers, and they're set to a 12 to 14 degree. And the forehead, for a woman, should have that. So it's kind of hard to show you in 2D here, but we should have that nice curve. So we can actually mark and see where there's volume loss. Men are a little bit different. They're kind of more of a flatter forehead. And you quite often see with um, young gals, they know that their foreheads are beautiful. They wear their hair off of their foreheads and really complement that. So that's one thing that we look at. Now, if we go back to straight on, I'm going to show you a few different measurements that we do. <clears throat> so our permanent makeup artists, of course, they are fantastic at actually marking. And when you have a consultation with them, they draw all over and help you figure out where the brow starts, where it peaks where the tail should be, but we can use our calipers to assess a few things. So with our calipers, we will measure the distance between the eyes, it's called the inner temporal distance, and that will give us our 1 to 1.6 ratio. So when we look at that brow, we should be able to have our peak is the 1, and our length should be the 1.6, okay? The other thing that we look at with the calipers is the angle. So women should have a 10 to 20 degree elevation in that eyebrow. So I've got the caliper set to that. Men, it's much flatter, it's like less than 10%. So if you look at here, so my elevation is pretty good, all right? Um, and then of course, the other thing that we wanna look at is where that brow, where that tail pops off. So again, I've got volume loss in through here, so you can see how the tail of my eyebrow is kind of falling off the side of my face. But what the girls look at is they'll put a straight edge across there and the tail should be slightly more elevated than the head. All right, so you can see with me, I've got some growth in here and sometimes just taking that growth out will give the illusion that that brow is lifted. Um, obviously you can do it with a pencil as well. Here in the clinic we do the um, brow tinting, which is temporary, and then of course we do the microblading and the permanent makeup, which just creates a beautiful, beautiful brow. Um, the other thing is, 
you know, when they line up, the brow should start at that inner temporal distance. And you can see with mine, my left eyebrow is halfway over to my eyeball. So they have corrected that by doing the microblading on my brows, and so it looks way more in proportion. Um, the other thing that we can look at is where it elevates. So if we take our arms again, we're going to take our big arm, and we're going to measure now the distance between the eyes, like that. Now that adjusts and gives us that point 0.6, that's where that brow should start. Okay. Now so many people come in, and the brow is dipped down, so it's pulling down, because this muscle, what it does when we frown, which I can't do, but it pulls in here. So if we place a neuromodulator in this muscle, that's going to relax the ability for that muscle to pull down, and we're actually going to get some elevation just with that treatment, which is great. The other thing that we can do is we can place a little bit of a neuromodulator on the outside of the eye here, because this muscle is also pulling in. So if we can relax the ability for the muscle to pull in there, quite often we get a lift in that tail of the eyebrow. Now, I want to point out, you can see how prominent my lines are up here. And again, that's why I wear bangs, because there's kind of a safe zone to put a neuromodulator in the forehead. And so many people get this confused. They come in and they say, I want a brow lift, can you please put Botox, you know, or a neuromodulator in my forehead? Um, and no, it's actually the opposite, all right? To get the brow lift, you're actually relaxing this muscle and this muscle, and the goal is that the frontalis muscle will pop up, all right? So usually we can get an elevation anywhere to one to three or four millimeters, depending on how strong your muscle is. So there is kind of that safe zone in here. And, you know, if we look at... You know, again, the height of the eyebrow, or the forehead, sorry. If we take our distance here, you know, our forehead height should be here. Okay, and again, good hairstylist will help you, you know, adjust your hair to make your forehead look attractive. But basically, it's the top third is the safe spot to put in your modulator. When we're dropping, you know, a product like that down into this third here, we risk changing the placement of the eyebrow. So we have to be careful, very cautious here, you know, very conservative. We can do a little bit here, but, you know, again, sometimes filler has more of a complementary effect. So those are my eyebrows, and if you can see, I don't know, I tried to wear my bangs a little shorter today. Got crazy with the hairspray, but you can see the improvement. So the girls have done the, I've had permanent makeup done over the years, and just in the last two months I had the microblading done. Absolutely love it. Um, you know, it's a little bit thicker than what I was used to, and I think on our Facebook wall, you can see my before and after pictures. But I've gotten a lot of compliments. Having a thicker brow, people say it's a little more useful. So I'm going with that. All right. So we're going to take that picture down. And we're actually going to play a game, the brow game. So what most people don't realize is that your eyebrows say so much about you, you know, based on their shape. And so this is our job, is to help you figure that out, all right? So I need interaction here. Anybody who's tuning in live, I need you to throw your comments back at me because I'm going to do some awesome art because I'm not a great artist. But I'm going to try to draw some eyebrows, and I need you guys to guess what that says about you, okay? So when somebody comes in and they've got this eyebrow, my awesome artistic abilities. Let's go with this side. Oh, we're going to get a funky shape on this side. Again, don't worry. I'm not the permanent makeup artist. I will not be tattooing you. Okay, and oh, we've got some big, deep wrinkles here. So, take a guess at what that tells the world. Anybody? Is anybody throwing in a comment? Okay, we'll use our camera girl. Sam, <laughs> I think they look angry. Angry, absolutely. So this is something that we see a lot of when people come in. and You know, they actually, the older you get and the more furrowed this is, you know, people come in and they say that their grandkids tell them they look angry, you know. And a lot of times it's to do with the muscle as well pulling together. But when people have a brow that's very, very heavy in the head 
and really bulky in here, it really draws the eye in, and it makes you look a little ticked off. Do we have a comment? Dr. Briggs says that might be low thyroid. Low thyroid. Oh, good one, Dr. Briggs. Okay, so what he's talking about is actually my very few hairs that I drew out here. So as we get older and our thyroid starts to drop, one of the first signs for women is that they lose the, the hair on the tail of the eyebrow. So yeah, if you're walking around with a lot of bulk here and just a few hairs out here, that could be low thyroid. So you might need to come and see Dr. Briggs and get that checked out. That's an awesome comment. Thank you. All right, so we're going to take off our angry eyebrow and we'll try a new one here. I had to hide the permanent makeup, mar uh, permanent makeup pen this morning, or not the permanent marker, because I was drawing on here and I had permanent stuff, so we had to search for alcohol to undo that, so I hid it. Alright, so this is our next eyebrow. Actually, I'm going to put it in red, because it's fitting. What does this eyebrow say about you? Oh, I can't see that. Can't see it? Oh, that was my red pen. It's not working that great. Okay, we'll switch back to black. I know if Larry was watching, he would definitely pipe up here. Okay, so we do get people come in and they've got these boing arched eyebrows. We call them Ronald McDonald's eyebrows. So basically what you're telling the world is you love McDonald's. Okay, not a good look. So, you know, usually they're drawn on like this. Hopefully you haven't let anybody tattoo them on you that way. So if they're drawn on, we can certainly undo them and fix them for you. Yeah. Kristen and Kaylee agree. They both say McDonald's. Ronald well, McDonald's eyebrows. Okay. Now, what is this eyebrow? Okay, and we see this more often now because of using neuromodulators, sometimes in here, and not treating anything on the forehead. Anyone? Um, let me just check here. No one has commented. Okay, I know what that is. So these are also known as spocked eyebrows, or sometimes we'll call it the Botox brow. And the reason why is sometimes when you're relaxing in the middle, Remember when I talked about getting that brow lift? So the goal is to get a lift, but not too much. And sometimes if people have really strong muscles up in their forehead, and it really pulls up, they get this sort of spocking effect. So you don't have to walk around like that, absolutely. All it takes is a tiny bit of a neuromodulator above the brow to soften that muscle and bring it back down. So if you see somebody walking around like that, and you know that they've had a neuromodulator treatment, Tell them to go get it fixed, because it's such an easy fix. They don't need to walk around like that. All right, our next eyebrow kind of starts here, and it goes way down there. Way, way down. Way down. What does that brow say? It makes me sad just looking at it. Such a sad eyebrow, right? So we get women that, you know, the brow is way down here. And, you know, it's kind of like the bone structure and the fat loss and everything sort of pulls it down. But some women will actually take the brow pencil and follow that line. And really, it's just making you look very sad. So don't do that, okay? Take a few hairs off the end. Get your brow pencil out. Draw it where it's supposed to start. And finish it where it's supposed to finish. And that's going to totally change the appearance of the face. You know, sometimes we'll see that more in our... Uh, our gals as we're getting a little older and the brows start to drop off the face. All right, so now here's another brow. Yeah, and we get a few of these. Okay. Not a nice expression, just kind of mad, I guess. Okay. So again, this is an easy brow to fix. I mean, definitely the permanent makeup artist can fix that you know, by kind of going in like this, taking out some hair where it doesn't need to be, and really creating a much more attractive brow. Now I'm going to do one last eyebrow for you, and we'll see how artistic I can be with this one. And tell me, 
what this says about you. Oh, there goes my pen. Good thing it's the last brow. All right, does anybody know what we call these eyebrows? Okay, it's a hockey stick eyebrow. Can you see that on camera? Did I just color that enough? If you color in there, that one, it looks like that. Yeah, so basically it's like the head is this square chunk, and then you got the tail coming off of it. It looks like a hockey stick eyebrow. You know, this tells me that uh, okay, you don't know what you're doing, or you have a really bad esthetician because, you know, if they're waxing and they're shaping them like that, um, that's just awful. You know, you need to soften it by taking this off, you know, letting some hair grow in here, or have a permanent makeup artist fill that in for you. Take a little bit off there, and you see how we can all of a sudden change the shape of the eyebrow. It's so easy to do. You know, anybody absolutely anybody can have beautiful, beautiful eyebrows. So it's such an exciting thing, and in my opinion, eyebrows, you know, does more for creating a youthful face than, you know, almost anything that we can do, you know, surgery included. Now, if you're on our Facebook page, you have seen this post. It was also on Instagram. This is actually a collection of 16 of our staff, and you can see they're beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And I actually had a client yesterday who said that she told her friend that if you want to see beautiful eyebrows, just go to external affairs and look at staff. And I'm really proud because everybody that's here has absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous eyebrows and everybody loves eyebrows around here and so we want to help you. So in closing, if you want to book an appointment, you know, come in with and see one of the staff members, you can see, um, you know, one of the permanent makeup artists or you can see the medical team you know, Dr. Briggs or one of the nurses, and we can come up with a treatment plan for you, but really it's, a lot of it is that combination treatment to create this beautiful brow. Um, I ask a favor of you all, please, please, please share this video with anybody who you think could benefit from learning more about how to create perfect brows. We also have something new in the clinic. Um, this was just created. It's called a Beautification Manual, and it's actually a 10-page manual that is free for our clients. And the very first page is all about upper face and the measurements that I talked about how to create that perfect brow. So any of our clients can swing by and pick up one of these. I believe the shipment's just coming in, hopefully today. And um, we can make sure that you go home with one of these and uh, just find out what we do. Um, next week, I am super, super excited because we have a special guest. Her name is Holly Tibble, and she's a registered psychologist. She teaches a workshop called The Daring Way, and it's a two-day workshop on how to live authentically and how to live wholeheartedly, how to live with passion. And I asked her to do the amazing task of shrinking that two-day workshop down to 15 minutes for our viewers. Um, so we're super excited. Um, if you want to tune in, that would be just a fantastic one. If you're wanting to live with a little bit more passion or get your mojo back. Um, so thanks so much for tuning in. Bye, don't forget to share the video.